Hello, welcome back to the uh, the next part in my uh, instalment on the Shark NV681 UKT. Now, in the last video, we uh, had a sort of a bit of a review of the machine and uh, its features and how it works and how it went together, um, what you could expect for your money. Now, in this video, what we're going to be doing is uh, to be looking at uh, how well does it perform on the carpets, how easy is it to push, and. Uh, uh, and my um, basically what I think about how it's working. So what we're going to be doing is uh, first of all we're going to be vacuuming the carpets. Uh, now I've put a little bit of test dirt down. Basically what's on this carpet is what we've cleaners picked up during this past week. In the front carpet there we've got some more uh, dirt there with more um, particles of rice and things because I want to see how well it agitates the carpet. Um, then we've got the uh, pickup test on the hard floor in the back. I don't have much hard floor in this house, so I have to use the lino in the back of the house there in the bathroom. Most of my house is carpet, okay? Which is probably why I went for the one with the without the uh, Duoclean brush roll on, which is what this one is. It's more, more, su more suitable really for people with a lot of carpets. If you had more hard floors, then you go for the Duoclean model. Right, so. Without further ado, let's get straight into this because um, I want to do a fair bit of cleaning with this now. So I'm going to do the back room and uh, I'm going to be having the camera down here while we clean in the back room so you can see it in action. And then what I'll do, I'll put the camera into uh, handheld and um, we will go and do into the front room with it. So let's go then. The suction control will be on uh, maximum throughout doing the carpets.
Right, so that's done a pretty good job of uh, pulling all that dirt up that was down on the carpet there. Now, um, what we did notice um, is basically, uh, you can see how well it raises the uh, pile of the carpet there, so it's done a good job with that. But what I was noticing, and I noticed this with the Dyson uh, hand sticks as well, is that if, you pull, if you're going with or against the, uh, the nap on the carpet, so obviously um, what's happening is that uh, if you pull it back too quickly, the floor head judders as it comes put on the backstroke. Uh, I find this with a lot of cleans on this type of carpet. Um, if you pull it back too quickly, the floor head will jump continuously and judder as you pull it back. That machine did exactly the same thing. Uh, so if you're going with the nap of the carpet, like so, to get the uh, pile raised, you need to be slow as you pull the head back and then it won't judder. Otherwise, it's picked up everything uh, that I expected it to do on that carpet. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to hold the camera now in handheld mode and we're going to go into the front room and uh, I'm going to tackle um, this mess here which contains uh, a lot more fine particles here, uh, rice and couscous, uh, the usual stuff that I use to test to see how much uh, vibration and agitation the machine puts onto the carpet. Right, so let's go again. One of the things you notice about this over the old version is just how quiet it is when you're using it. The motor hasn't got that high-pitched scream to it that the other sharks have had in the past. The floor head motor is actually quite reasonably quiet as well. It can be a little bit difficult to push at times on this carpet, but if it does, you'd open your suction control valve there and that would make it easier to push. But for this test I'm using it on full suction. So as we can see from that, it does not have very, very strong agitation. It basically removes what it needs to from inside the floor head area, but it will not create agitation outside the floor head. And you could see from that there was absolutely no movement at all of those particles outside the cleaner head. And that may have been done to avoid the noise level having to reduce it to 80 decibels. They've obviously had to reduce the amount of agitation it performs. So yes, we can see from there it does not it does not agitate or beat the carpet or vibrate the carpet. So it still tends to remove everything it needs to remove though. And I had this thing, I had this uh, I saw this uh, same with the Dyson light ball as well. Whereas old versions of the Dysons, uh, they used to have a lot of agitation on the DC40, the Mark II and the DC41, the light ball doesn't. And this one behaves in exactly the same way. with that large item there which won't go under the front of the floor head and it's being pushed along. So I'm not sure how we'd pick that up, I suppose we'd have to lift the head, that's it, and put it on to the top.
But again, the issue with snow ploughing would be dealt with if you bought the Duo Clean model, which has the Duo Clean roller on the front. So I'm not too overly concerned about it with this one because I don't normally have large debris like that lying around on the floor. That's just solely to show it picking up the rubbish basically and to see if it had any agitation outside the floor head. see the judder again. Can you see the way it's left the lines on the carpet when pulling it back? That's because I'm pulling it back too quickly against the pile of the carpet and you can see those lines it's left. If you pull it back slower, it then doesn't do it. So you've got to give the brush roll a chance to raise the pile and then it won't judder. But it's usually only when you're going and you're pulling it back against the direction of the nap and the brush roll is having to fully raise that pile. And that's quite a struggle for it to do, which is why you have to pull it back slower to give it time to do it. And then it'll do a good job. Let's just move this chair. And obviously when you uh, put the machine in the upright position shuts the brush roll off automatically as most cleaners do that have two motors right let's just carry on so what i'm going to do now i'm going to just take the um unit into lift away mode now and i can carry the canister while I use the floor head. So in order to do that, I'll have to put the camera down on the back. find with this is that when it's in lift away mode like this the back of the floor head becomes very very light and when you're pulling it back you're tending to find that the back of it lifts off the carpet as you're pulling it back it doesn't stay flat on the floor so you've got to make that effort to hold the handle down so that you're dragging it back with the wheels remaining on the floor it's very easy to keep lifting the back of it up because obviously you haven't got the weight of the unit on the back now let's carry on is to put the, the uh, dusting brush on the end of the hose and we'll see what it's like to do the dusting with. So uh, I'll just reposition that camera. Right. I'm going to take the um, dusting tool out of here and I'll put it on the end of the handle. 
like so, and then extend the dusting brush. And like I said on the other on the other review, you are having a very very long uh, reach then between here and here. So that might be all right when you're doing down low, but when you've got like close range like this, you're finding you're dusting with your hand right back here because it's so long. And uh, that I don't particularly like very much. I prefer to have a shorter dusting tool that just fits onto the end of here. But like I said, you can get 35mm dusting brushes off eBay that will fit onto here. As I know the Mamila one does. So I'm going to take off the lift away again and then use this to just dust the, uh, the furniture. So then don't get me wrong, you can still do the dusting using this attachment. You, I thought once you get used to it, you'll be all right. It's just what you're used to, I suppose, and it just seems to me that I'm, I prefer to have the hose like this with the, with the dusting brush straight on the end of the hose without all this length. So, you know, it's just a matter of personal preference with that, really, but it's not my ideal type of dusting brush, and I said exactly the same with the Dyson Lightborn as well. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave it in lift-away mode like so, and I'm going to put the camera up at the top of the stairs and we're going to try and go up the stairs with this with the turbo brush on. So you'll just have to give me a second while I set that up. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to put the supply dusting brush, uh, sorry, dusting brush, <laughs> dusting brush on the brain. Uh, we've got that there the turbo brush and I'm going to push that onto the end of the hose like so. So obviously you haven't got such a long reach with that now so that's that's a bit better. And I'm going to put the camera at the top of the stairs okay let's just focus that down and we'll see how easy it is to go up the stairs. So that was very, very, very easy indeed. It's excellent for doing stairs with. And you've got that fingertip control as well to be able to turn it on and off when you need to. The suction control there varies the speed of this thing, so it isn't too noisy. So all in all, that is a very, very good machine for doing the stairs, which I thought it would be. 
The only problem is you do have to be careful when you go back down that you don't trip over the cable. So that is one issue. Right, what we're going to do now is I'll put it back into upright configuration and we will go into the bathroom there and see how well it picks up the particles on the hard floor. So again, just bear with me for a second while I set the machine up. In fact, we'll just um, put the camera there while I do it. So it's very, very easy and very quick to set it back up for upright. Um, you've got it in this configuration and we just come and stick our pod back on the front, remove this, put this back in and then put the, if the hose is twisted, because the hose doesn't swivel at either end, you need to take it off and just twist the hose back round again, like so, so that it isn't twisted and then stick your clip back in. There we go. I'll be with you in a second, I've just got to put the plug in over here. Because it's only an 8 metre cable, it won't stretch from there, so I have to plug it in, in this socket here. Right, so let's go into here, we'll do the hard floor in here. And we will see, what I'm going to have to do is to re reduce the suction right down for going onto the lino. Right, so this is, this is what we need to do for this purpose. Turn the brush roll off. Basically what we can see is that uh, it doesn't do very well with large debris on hard floor, which I didn't expect it would do because that's what the GeoClean model is for. Uh, this basically has got a very uh, low front to its floor head, so whilst it will get the fine particles up no problem, uh, it will not pick up anything larger. So you've got your fluff here. I mean, this is very excessive for a hard floor, but basically it just shows the need, really, why they produce the GeoClean model, which uh, has the roller on the front of here, which takes in the hard particle, the, the large particles very well. So on hard floors, this machine is not that brilliant if you've got a, a floors with a lot of debris on them. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use the hose and the wand to clean this up. Right. This battery on. Try again. Unfortunately, it just isn't going to clean 
any particle, it, well, it, even particles of rice will not fit under the floor head. Because this lino is not snuck, stuck down, even with the machine on minimum suction, it's not able to clean effectively on hard floor on this type. Whereas the Dyson ball did, this shark will not. So if you've got a lot of hard floors, right, the GeoClean model is probably the better one for you. So I'm just going to clean the rest of it up now again with the hose. Right, so that's the hard floor one done. Um, now obviously you wouldn't have uh, massive messes like that in real use, but uh, you might have the odd spill of rice on the floor. And if you've got lino like this, which a lot of people do, not everybody's is stuck down, even with minimum suction, this is going to struggle, right? So it's best to get the duo clean version with the roller on the front, if you've got a lot of hard floors. So the last little section I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get the turbo brush and take it into lift away. One thing you have to be careful of is that it doesn't fall back as well when it's in lift away. So let's just take the hose off. Again, it's a bit tricky for me because I've got only one hand to do it with the camera and the other. Right, so it's now in the lift away mode and I'm going to go and get the turbo brush. And then we're going to see how well the turbo brush cleans the chair. So again, just like it was on the stairs, I'm going to use the turbo brush, turn the machine on. And more suction power, that's maximum. No problem at all. So that works really well. Works well on stairs, works well on furniture. Okay, let's just before we finish, have a quick look at the bin. So we can take the bin off. Now we can see there that uh, the bin is about just, uh, just under half full, just over half full after all that dirt that I've picked up in there. So it will hold a reasonable amount in the bin. There's no clogs and no blockages inside here. That's perfectly clear. There was pet hair in there, but I think you would have an issue if you had ladies with long hair in the house. Similarly, you'd have to clean the brush roll off as well. Obviously, we've just been on the hard floor in there and hasn't been rolling, so we've, we've got a few hairs stuck to it. Long hairs would wrap around here as well, so you'd need to go along with a pair of scissors along that line and cut those off. So yes, um, the filter itself, we know with a shark that the filters get dirty quickly. They're designed to do it. Um, it has picked up more fine dust on that filter there. But again, very little of it gets through, pardon me. Um, and very little gets through here as well. But they do dirty the filters. But I'm not going to be worried about that until about the month mark and then I will give it a wash and see if it loses any suction in the meantime. So the only drawback really is large debris on hard floors, especially with lino. This is the only thing it seems to struggle on. Everything else, it's a really good cleaner. There will be more videos coming up from me on this in the future, as just vacuuming videos. But for now, I'll say goodbye for now.